Hello, welcome to 1.3, Evaluating Limits Analytically. When a function is continuous at C, the limit can be evaluated by direct substitution. Limit as x approaches C of f of x is just f of C. Some basic limits, let b and c be real numbers and let n be a positive integer. Limit as x goes to C of b equals b. Limit as x goes to C of x is just C. Limit as x goes to C of x to the n is C to the n. So what's our limit as x goes to 3 of 5? It's just going to be 5. There's no variable there for the 3 to affect. Limit as x goes to negative 3 of x is just negative 3. And the limit as x goes to 3 of, of uh, x cubed is 3 cubed, which is 27. Let's scroll this up. Properties of limits. Let b and c be real numbers, let n be a positive integer, and let f and g be functions with the following limits. The limit as x goes to c of f of x equals l, and the limit as x goes to c of g of x equals k. Scalar multiple. You can multiply some number times your function, you're just going to have b times that limit. Some are different. The limit as x goes to c of f of x plus g of x is just going to be l plus k. The limit of f of x minus g of x is l minus k. Limit of f of x times g of x is l times k. And the limit of f of x divided by g of x is l divided by k. Whereas power, the limit as x goes to c of f of x to the n is going to be l to the n. Okay, limits of 3x cubed minus 2x squared plus 4 as x goes to 1. That's going to be the limit as x goes to 1 of 3x cubed minus the limit as x goes to 1 of 2x squared plus the limit as x goes to 1 of 4. That's going to be what? 3 times 1 cubed minus 2 times 1 squared plus 4. That's going to be 3 minus 2 plus 4 is 5. Okay, we're going to go on to page 2 now. Limits of polynomial and rational functions. If p is a polynomial function and c is a real number, then the limit as x goes to c of p of x equals p of c. So the last one where I split everyone up, you don't have to split them all up, you can just plug it in. If r is a rational function, given by r of x equals p of x over q of x, and c is a real number such that it does not make the denominator zero, that's key to this, the limit as x goes to c of r, uh, r of x is r of c, which is p of c over q of c. So for example, 3, find the limit as x goes to 2 of x squared plus 3x plus 2 over x plus 2. So put the 2 in there, it's going to be 2 squared plus 3 times 2 plus 2 all over 2 plus 2. 4 plus 6 plus 2 is 12 over 4 equals 3. Okay, the limit of a function involving a radical. Let n be a positive integer. The following limit is a valid for all c if n is odd, and valid for c being positive if n is even. As x goes to c, the limit of the nth root of x is the nth root of c. Limit of a composite function. If f and g are functions, limit as x goes to c of g of x equals l, and limit as x goes to c of f of x equals f of l. The limit of f of g of x as x goes to c is f of the limit of g of x as x goes to c, which is just f of l. So find the limits, given that f of x equals 5 minus x and g of x equals x cubed. So the first one is the limit as x goes to 1 of 5 minus x, which is 5 minus 1, which is 4. Next one, it's going to be the limit as x goes to 4 of x cubed, which is 4 cubed, which is 64. And the limit as x goes to 1 of g of f of x. That's going to be g of the limit as x goes to 1 
of our f is 5 minus x, which is going to be g of this limit we found up here, and that's 4, and that we found over here, which is 64. Go on to the next page, so pause if you need to pause. Limits of trigonometric functions. Let C be a real number in the domain of the given trig function. Limit as a x goes to C of sine of x is sine of C for tangent x is tangent C. Secant x is secant c, cosine x is cosine c, cotangent x is cotangent c, and for cosecant x is cosecant c. So find the limits as x goes to pi over 2 of sine of x. That's going to be sine pi over 2, which is 1. As x goes to 1 of sine of pi x over 2, that's sine of pi times 1 over 2, which is 1. And as x goes to pi of cosine 3x, is going to be cosine of 3 pi, which is going to be negative 1. And functions that agree at all but one point, let c be a real number, and f of x equals f of g. For x not equal c in an open interval, containing c at the limit of g of x, as x approaches c exists, and the limit of f also exists, and the limit as x approaches c of f of x equals the limit as x approaches c of g of x. The point of this is f and g agree everywhere except at one point. And if that's the case, the limit of f is the same as the limit of g. So we can come up with a new function. For example, this one here. As x goes to negative 1 of x cubed plus 1 over x plus 1, you're going to have a 0 over 0. Well, that's not defined. What we can do is factor that out. It becomes the limit as x goes to negative 1 of x plus 1 times x squared plus x, no, minus x plus 1 over x plus 1. These x plus 1's will divide out. And we end up with this polynomial. You can plug in the negative 1. Negative 1 squared minus negative 1 plus 1. That's going to be 1 plus, that's 3, isn't it? So let's go on to the next page. Feel free to pause if you need to. So the strategy for finding limits. Learn to recognize which limits can be evaluated by direct substitution. If the limit of f of x as x approaches c cannot be evaluated by direct directed substitution, try to find a function g that agrees with f for all except for the one point. So choose g such that the limit of g of x can be evaluated by direct substitution. Apply the functions that agree with what we just did to the conclude analytically and use a graph or table to reinforce your conclusion. So we've worked this one a couple of times, or at least back in um, the previous section. Limit as x goes to 2 of 2, no, it was a little bit different. 2 minus x over x squared minus 4. That would be the limit as x goes to 2 of negative 1 times x minus 2 over x minus 2 times x plus 2. The x minus 2's will divide out. That gives us the limit as x goes to 2 of negative 1 over x plus 2. That's negative 1 over 2 plus 2, which is negative 1 over 4. The indeterminate form when the limit yields 0 over 0, you can avoid this by reevaluating the limit. We saw that in uh, example 6. So in here, as x goes to 0, what happens? You get square root of 2 plus 0 minus square root of 2. So square root of 2 minus square root of 2 is 0 over 0. We can work this out. Now, good news is, if, uh, I think it's calculus 2 will come up with a, another method for doing this, and you're going to like that a lot. So stick around for calculus 2. If I multiply this by the conjugate of the numerator, square root of 2 plus x plus the square root of 2 over the square root of 2 plus x plus the square root of 2. Say I'm multiplying by 1, effectively. This is the limit as x goes to 0. 
Now this is an A minus B, A plus B type of thing, so it's going to be 2 plus X minus 2 on top over X times the quantity, the square root of 2 plus X plus 2 down below. Square root of 2. So the 2's will subtract out. And you end up with a limit as X approaches 0 of X over X times the square root of 2 plus X plus the square root of 2. These X's divide out, leaves a 1 on top. So if you plug in the 0 now, you end up with 1 over the square root of 2 plus 0 plus the square root of 2. 1 over the square root of 2 plus the square root of 2. 1 over 2 root 2. If we multiply that by square root of 2 over square root of 2, we end up with square root of 2 over 4. Okay, moving right along here. Feel free to pause if you need to. Here we have the squeeze theorem. Oh, the previous one, look at my notes I have for you. you. I go into more detail if you forgot how to do uh, conjugates there. Okay, squeeze theorem. If h of x is uh, less than f of x, less than g of x, for all x in an open, open interval containing c except possibly at c, and the limit as x goes to c of h of x is equal to l, and the limit of g of x as x goes to c is also l, what we have is f of x will have the same limit as L. So that, let's say here is g of x, here is h of x. So if f is around here, and we're going to this place here in our c, it's going to have the same limit because it's being squeezed there. h is always smaller, g is always bigger and H and G are going to the same place. So it's squeezing F into that same place. Now two special trigonometric limits. The limit is X goes to zero of sine X over X. Now you think it'd be zero over zero, but it's gonna be one. And the limit is X goes to zero of one minus cosine X over X is zero. So evaluate the limit as X goes to zero of sine of X times 1 minus cosine of x over 2x squared. This is going to be, I'll pull this 2 out, 1 half times the limit as x goes to 0 of sine x over x times 1 minus cosine of x over x. See, x times x is x squared, and I have the 2 right there. We have the sine x, we have 1 minus cosine of x. So we can treat this as 1 half times the limit as x goes to 0 of sine of x over x times the limit as x goes to 0 of cosine, sorry, 1 minus cosine of x over x. So the first case, this right here is going to be equal to 1. This is going to be equal to 0. So we have 1 half times 1 times 0, which is 0. So we're going to look at example 10 now. Our last example for this section. Evaluate the limit. The limit is t goes to 0 of sine 3t over 2t. Now up here, just this has to be the same as that, and we can make that modification. What if I multiply this by 3 over 3? Then I'd have the limit as t goes to 0 of 3 times sine 3t over 2 times 3t. So 3 times t is 3t, the 2 is still down there. I can pull the 3 halves out, that's just a coefficient. 3 halves times the limit as t goes to 0 of sine 3t over 3t. Now from above, this part here looks a lot like what we have above. What if we say y equals 3t and then as t goes to 0, y would go to 0 as well. So we'd have 3 halves limit y going to 0 of sine y over y. Now it's a single term like we saw above. And that's 3 halves times 1, which is 3 halves. Okay. I really don't think we needed to do that. 
because these look the same. Should fit in there, but that helps you see it better. Okay, that does it for 1.3. Hope you enjoyed that, and send me your questions. Thank you.